Greetings Old World Explorers. In this video we're going to be taking a look at St. Joseph, Missouri, just north of Kansas City. And so the story goes. St. Joseph supposedly founded by a Joseph, Joseph Robidou, Robidou, fur trader, so beginning with the fur trade, eventually getting into um, some growth because of the gold rush in Sacramento. Uh, then becoming a jumping off point for the Pony Express, basically the end of the line for the world of rail in North America. Pony Express operating for a very short period of time, 1860 to 1861. The American Civil War comes along, Union soldiers camp out there. After the Civil War, the city's a ghost town, but then all of a sudden experiences a massive boom because of manufacturing. And just for a little bit of flair, one of the major points of the story for St. Joseph has to do with the outlaw Jesse James meeting his end. And the rest, as they say, is his story. In this video, we're going to use what I could find in the way of architecture to paint a different picture of history for you. Let's look at St. Joseph, Missouri. Now, St. Joseph was recommended to me by a viewer. I had never actually heard of St. Joseph, Missouri before. Uh, and what I found surprised me, of course, even though I've been doing this research for some time. Now, let's start with the uh, population demographics. And we can see modern day are at about 70,000. And they tell us here that in 1900, the census was over 100,000 people. But then we have a little disclaimer down here letting us know that um, the actual population in 1900 is believed to be closer to 75 to 80,000 people and that the uh, business leaders of the city were trying to boost the city by skewing the population numbers. I find that interesting because if that's happening there at that time and it's being admitted in the historical record, uh, where else is it happening where it's not being admitted? Something to consider. And some more aspects of his story that I find interesting about St. Joe. Um, the second city in the United States to incorporate the electric streetcar. Uh, that would be in 1888, we've been told. South Bend, Indiana, the first, which I found strange. So as we look at St. Joe increase post-American Civil War, from about 20,000 people to 80,000 people, let's say, at the turn of the century. And most of these buildings that you're going to see in this video will have sprung up in that time period. And even with this initial photograph, we can tell um, that these appear to be quite a bit older than, than that age. This looking like the 30s, maybe the 40s. These looking very old. And we have streets like this in St. Joe, old brick cobble style streets, looking very, very worn. So I'm going to provide to you a, an alternative to the his story that we have been told, the story. Um, let's just consider it an, another story. Uh, and part of that story has to do with um, the fact that we are living in a post-cataclysm world. Now, some people use the term the mud flood um, to describe an aspect of that cataclysm. And this region of the state seems to have been, uh, have experienced that. You can see here these two buildings, and this is a screenshot from uh, a video which I'll post in, in the description. Um, it's a nice uh, um, drone footage video of St. Joe's modern day. But you can see here the slope of the buildings or of the ground relative to the buildings indicating some form of uh, uh, topsoil accumulation in this direction. So something to keep in mind when you're looking at these uh, photographs from the old world. 
and those of you in the community that do this research and that are conscious of it um, seem to be able to uh, spot it quite clearly. So another brick row just to show you. And a stunning architecture really in St. Joseph for uh, such a small city, really. And this one I showed you originally and you can see the uh, the scale of the uh, architecture here. You can also see the lower portions here look, looking like the windows go below ground. So it's ticking the boxes again of uh, what we might consider to be old world. And just to explain the theory a little bit more to, to those of you that are new to this uh, research, uh, the uh, assertion is that uh, history is not a linear progression as laid out to us in the history books, but rather a um, cover-up uh, of an actual event, uh, a, a catastrophic event that wiped out civ the civilization previous and then an attempt to erase all evidence of that civilization. So through my videos, I'm trying to point out the uh, architectural evidence and suggest that uh, possibly what we're looking at is uh, evidence of that former civilization. And when you we look at architecture like this, and you do the math again on the population numbers for the time, and also the uh, um, the technology available to us, um, given the historical narrative or the history, let's say, and uh, and we begin to see that the two don't really add up especially when you compare it to the way that we build in, in modern day, which has a much more, what we, we would term, brutalist um, look and feel to it. Not, it's not just about the look, but it's about the feel of these structures. There seems to be something more to these structures. Um, much of the theory has to do with uh, what people have dubbed Antiquitech um, existing on these buildings, um, a process where there was a harnessing of the ether um, energy in the atmosphere and using that as a free energy source. Uh, this free energy source um, having been covered up by the robber baron-esque powers that be and of course they had to put a meter on it so it's not really such a stretch if you think about it. If we can uh, accept that there's a lie going on here then we can begin to uh, pick it apart. And these are just some of the uh, mansions in St. Joseph, Missouri. So a heavy um, manufacturing um, aspect to, to this location. You're going to see many of these multi-storied structures with the ornate facades uh, supposedly having been built in that 1880, 1890s period for some of these um, uh, businesses. This is the Sheridan Clayton Paper Company. So we're to accept that this building here was constructed to house this business. Much more plausible when we look at this is that this building, uh, the structure was there and it was repurposed for this business at that time. And I'm sure that they were not occupying the entire warehouse. And many of these, of course, have been demolished over the years. This interesting as well, 1861. Yes, it's a depiction, and we're looking at a, at the time of the Pony Express, about 9,000 people. And what you see here, even in the depiction, is the domes. So, very interesting, very difficult architecture to pull up, pull off without technology, even with the technology of today. Very, very difficult. And you're going to see this architecture repeat itself throughout the video. This is quite a large file. Very in-depth look here at uh, St. Joseph. If you enjoy these videos, don't forget to like and sub, and please feel free to comment. Correct me if I'm getting any of the uh, any of the details locally um, incorrect. I'm not from the area. I'm just trying to bring my ideas and the visuals that I find. So. Again, you're seeing the, the false front. This one going way back in. In, in the narrative apparently, right back into the 1870s, some of these buildings, 1880s, 
again, multi-storied, so we have to put it together what the logistics would be um, and what the reasoning would be to build it in such a manner at that time period. And the more we look into that, we begin to realize that that narrative really falls apart. These are some of the banks that existed. We'll see a few of these more in depth, the Merchant Bank, German American Bank, First National Bank, and the Toodle Lemon National Bank, looking very old and vine-covered. Again, the multi-storied aspect and the brick and arched windows, and there's detailing too that it's very difficult to see in some of these photographs that you will see on some. And here's the story telling you about the uh, first trolley in the West. We have the YMCA's, the uh, the men's and the women's. We'll take a closer look at this one later on. But you can see here as we look at the men's, um, very ridiculous to think that this was built in such a manner. And the front door would why wouldn't you put the front door on the street? This looking like the main entrance. Um, absolutely ridiculous the angle as a relative to the street so again that uh, post cataclysm um, reclaiming aspect rearing its head and then they're giving us a depiction again 1873 so about 20,000 people were told and you can see how well built out this is multi-storied brick structures adjacent to each other with all sorts of ornate facades what I suggest to be um, remnants of the previous civilization that was almost eliminated in a cataclysm. And even the newspaper, the Daily Gazette, gets three stories. Very tall stories as well. Interesting. We also see in a lot of the uh, rock work what look like megalithic um, um, masonry you know, for the landscaping of much of the land. And oftentimes it's, uh, I think I think we're programmed to resist um, considering these possibilities, that, there, that history has been a distortion. Um, there's sort of a, a knee-jerk response to resist and, and dispute and get angry. And, and uh, I don't, uh, I don't mean to induce that type of response in people. I, I re recognize that that's going to happen. Here is a previous YMCA. I could find no trace of this building, only a couple postcards. I suspect it wasn't always a YMCA. You can tell it's a YMCA here because they put a little sign out front. But Another thing you're going to find in St. Joseph is the spiral fire escape um, stairs. Very interesting and a unique feature, not something I've seen in my, uh, in my investigations thus far anywhere else. But getting back to what I was saying, um, so the, the need to defend the historical narrative is that knee-jerk response. And we use these anchor points in history. Well, what about this and what about that? And I think we have to remember that all of those anchor points have been given to us by these same, um, let's say, the same forces that have gained control of the realm in which we find ourselves. So... I don't think there's a lot of credibility in much of the uh, of the story that we've been given, and so much of it has been laid out for it, laid out for us, and has continued to be uh, is continuing to be laid out for us um, for the purposes of deception. Check this out on the corner here. This is a very unique feature up here as well. Very unique and. Uh, as far as logic goes, I understand whoever was building this home wanted something ornate, but this is off the chart charts uh, ridiculously interesting and uh, not something I think most people would even think up um, in our modern day. So it's very uh, beautiful structure. They, they give off a bit of that haunted vibe, of course, now. That's a pop culture um, hijacking of the old world narrative is that, uh, that haunted you know, the, all the old world is haunted. Don't look into this, it's going to be scary type of thing. But you see this interesting and beautiful architecture, and I encourage you, wherever you live, to uh, walk the streets and keep an eye out for this type of stuff, the extra detailing and the these type of extra things that you see on buildings, not just your typical um, um, building 
but a little bit more flare, and I suggest that those are um, old world structures, and often you can see what remains of the, the top end of a window at the sidewalk level sometimes. So something to look, look for, especially if you're in the American Midwest and really anywhere these places where the population is gridded out and uh, a decent size. Very old world looking structure here. And you can see, and I'm going to show more evidence of this in this video, what this this is looking like it's been decapitated and a new roof line has been uh, been put on. So I imagine they would have taken these structures down to uh, the joists of a specific floor and used that as the roof joists and then created a flat roof effect. And of course these buildings getting neglected over time to the point where there's a cry out for them to be torn down. Again, amazing amazing structures here in St. Joseph and one of the reasons I felt the need to highlight it and dig deeper into this location because I think it's really worth it was really worth a deep dive to see this uh, architecture. Here we're getting a shot of one of the banks and we will see the, the entire structure moving forward just wanted to show you, to get, just so you get a closer look at um, what this looks like in the modern day. You're seeing a lot of these black and whites with these multi-storied structures, um, but you don't really get a sense of the detail that these uh, that was incorporated into many of these structures. Here you can see again the low windows and the door having to go up to this level for this the door, and again the beautiful um, spiral fire escape staircases and a very very ornate front of the building. At this point in time a lot of the windows on the side have been covered and this again in a very early time period so repurposing. Don't I don't I do not believe the structure was made for the American Electric Company. I think this is a repurposed building from the old world. I could be wrong. This, this is my assertion, and I'm attempting to bring you enough evidence to possibly um, have you consider um, what I'm saying as a possibility. The back end of the post office, customs house and post office. And of course, we have a lunatic asylum in St. Joseph. I've covered the lunatic asylum um, aspect of history, uh, what I think was going on. I don't want to get too in depth on this. They do have a ridiculous museum there or these days. Um, it's almost like a, it feels like a mockery, a lot of that. Very grainy photo here, but um, a bit of the sto backstory on this. Just a few aspects to cast some seeds of doubt. Construction began in 1874, it also opened in 1874. So I don't know if this is a 12 month um, construction time or a one month construction time. Who knows? But absolutely ridiculous. The place has been demolished, or mostly demolished. Actually, a bit of it's been repurposed. And I'll put a link to that in the description. You can have a closer look. Here's a good view from the front. You can see how it sort of um, it moves back. You have the circular aspect here. You have the cupolas. Uh, absolutely absurd to suggest that this thing was built in one year in 1874 at a time when St. Joseph had a population of about 25,000 people. So how many of those people were they planning to put in this uh, institution? They must have had a real need to lock up the insane. And this is a closer view just to get a sense of uh, what that might have entailed to construct this thing. Magnificent structure, very large here we have a later day, they call this the infirmary. I'm not sure, I just thought I'd include it. I'm not sure when that was built, whether or not it's New World or Old World repurposed. This is definitely some repurposing of the Old World. Let's see the front end here. And just an aerial for you again of the asylum. You can see that's the front and these are the Kirkbride style bat wings um, that you see all over all over the states but really all over much of the western world going into places like Australia and New Zealand as well and many more places I would suggest. 
here's another ridiculous part of the uh, historical narrative, I think. Uh, the auditorium. We're told it's built 1905 to 1912. Here we have a postcard from 1906 or 7. Um, they're showing you apparently at what stage of the construction they're at. Uh, this is the only real construction photo I could find of uh, anything really in St. Joseph, but um, I don't really buy much of what we see in many of these uh, old construction photos. And this is the front of it as it stands today. And I do apologize, I, I think it was demolished in the early 80s, it looks to be. Very difficult to find a hard date on that. Um, it's funny because so many of these structures were demolished during the time of urban renewal, they will tell you. Um, that would make this a 70-year-old structure when it was torn down, which I think is absurd when we look at, look at the uh, building. This is interesting, though. This is giving us a good view of what this detailing here looks like on the inside. So it's like a tubular casting going on. Very interesting. And one of the few instances where I've been able to uh, see what that looks like on the inside. Beautiful structure. Check out the uh, globe type, uh, maybe lights, not sure. Anyone, if you've ever been in this uh, building uh, or have any stories, please add it to the comments section. That'd be fantastic to hear something. And a bit of the interior. They're saying this is the interior. I'm not sure it, this could be a theater as well. I do apologize if I have that mixed up. There's a lot of uh, a lot of buildings to dig into. This might be a theater nearby as well. You can see here horse and buggy era and this thing looking like it was. This is supposedly just a drawing and it hasn't been built yet according to the information given with this uh, drawing. But this looking like a rendering of something that was standing. I made the Aunt Jemima Mills Company, St. Joseph. Again, repurposed old world structure. Looking very sort of hodgepodge. Um, looking like they've scaled something right down from what it used to be to my eye. And there you have the uh, factory as it grows, apparently, even though the population doesn't really grow for uh, St. Joseph from the turn of the century on to modern day. There's not really any population growth according to the census information. They just have these amazing anti Antiquitech roofs, beautiful structures. All right, moving on. Here we have the German American Bank, and this is this would be what we were looking at earlier, I do believe. There you're getting a good look at the spiral staircase, and the detailing up top. Very unique and interesting look here. Let's take a closer look. Let's go. There we go. And you can see, very interesting looking like wreaths maybe. I would suggest all old world architecture. Here we are standing up above on that uh, balcony looking out and you can see looking very similar to much of what we've seen in other parts of the American Midwest especially. We have the Whittingmore Shoe Company showing us again signs of what we, what we call mud flooding. Interesting corner entrance. You'll see more of those here. This is the front entry, shoe company. This is what they're calling the Benton Club, social club founded in 1887. So when, 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 when you come at me with a uh, conspiracy theory as a label, I do wear it like a badge. I don't know if you've noticed in the comments, but um, this is very, the very definition definition of conspiracy. It was when uh, professional leaders um, meet uh, at a social, socially, I suppose you could say, uh, to make the assumption that uh, they're not making decisions about society behind closed doors. I think is very naive and even childish, really, which is kind of the root of why we are where we are at in our in the world right now in the modern day. The Benton Club. There's a difference between conspiracy theory and a conspiracy. 
So kind of a grainy look here at uh, an old dry goods. You can see um, BF hair dry goods. How many stories? Why you, why would you build it in such a manner in the location that it, it's located? Doesn't make a lot of sense. So we're looking at the old Board of Trade building. This is a, this old building's basically a ghost. You'll see more ghosts in this video, uh, which means there's no other real evidence that I could find of this structure. Um, and what I suggest was being done with a lot of these. Um, if you can imagine this building being cut off at this ridge line right here, sorry, not ridge line, this line right here, and the mansard roof and all the dormers and towers and uh, and tech up top have been removed, and then you have um, this, the joists for this floor um, becoming the new roof line and the flat roof being uh, introduced. Um, I think we're seeing that across the realm. It, it's taking away the splendor of the old world as to uh, confuse us, I think, and to misdirect us. We'll see more evidence of that in the video as we proceed. Another mud flutter you can see going down the street. Uh, you can even see it here on the front. So both sides of the street um, having slopes. Uh, but yet you still have low windows incorporated into the architecture. So now it wouldn't make sense to build in that way. If you're designing this building, um, you would have you would take care of that. You wouldn't really be adding that to the uh, the building plan. And and really the manufacturing for this region is uh, is absolutely ridiculous. The amount of manufacturers. And they tell us several hundred factories. So along with all the professional classes uh, and the factories and manufacturing, um, who's doing the building of these structures? Well, I suggest that the buildings are not being built. They're actually being repurposed for the new world. And again, we're seeing the same things. The front, the details. The details on the front again. Very, very beautiful looking structures. This is all I could find of this one, this ghost building. Yet another ghost building. They could just call it the cathedral. No more details on that. Couldn't find much more on that one. It's possible that the towers have been removed and it still stands. I don't know. It would be unrecognizable. You'd have to really look. Here we have a sister's hospital. Again, take note of the, the cupola. So really, there would, if we're to uh, buy into the uh, into history, let's say his story, um, we have to assume that there's an, a sense of urgency to get these things built, to get this quickly growing city off the ground and moving. Um, that doesn't allow for this type of uh, these type of details and the excavations that would have had to have gone on. These these are all time consumers, enormous time consumers. So nothing really being built um, for expedience. And then you're getting these these types of shots from an early St. Joseph, Missouri of, of 80,000 people or less. And you see these types of structures and these types of structures and really not, uh, not fitting what we expect when we watch a, a Brad Pitt movie of Jesse James. We expect a single story gable roof made out of wood. Um, very uh, modest with a bit of detail, a bit of wallpaper maybe, but we don't expect to see this type of stuff. This is the Federal Building Post Office, looking like many post offices I've seen in my research. Massive structure, of course, no longer stands. Here we're getting a good look at a lot of the flattened roof. What do you think? Did they decapitate a lot of these buildings? Hmm. And again, the sheer volume of uh, what I'm showing you should uh, raise suspicions, I think. Again, is this a window? Uh, is that a sliver of a window? Yeah, the sheer volume of the architecture in this location does not make any sense for what we, we're being told about the location. There are a lot of these towns that seem to be, I get a lot of comments, people saying these are dying towns. I mean, a lot of places are, are really on their last legs. You know, we're looking at societal breakdown in many ways. Um, but there seems to be an intentional um, deterioration going on, 
I think, with a lot of this as well. Here's the YWCA we saw earlier. And we have the Elks on board. Now this is a beautiful, beautiful structure, and this is a ghost of a building. I mean, I could find nothing written about this structure. I found a handful of postcards looking exactly the same with this single shot. But why would you bury this? What is the logic in erasing this from the historical record? Uh, it, this is something you think would you would celebrate. Even if it were demolished and no longer standing, you think you would have this um, as a highlight of architecture for this town. But of course you don't, so suspicious. We have the C.D. Smith Drug Company. They're telling us that this was built for the C.D. Smith Drug Company. Um, check this out right here. Modern day still stands and there's a good detailed view of what that looks like up close. Just to give you a sense of the magnificence uh, of how that goes together. Beautiful. And here we are looking at it from across the street. Even in the foreground you're seeing this curved brick um, construction going on, but the facade on the front of that building is just spectacular, but it's not because most of the buildings that I'm finding here in St. Joseph have that spectacular facade. Yet another high school and a Christian Brothers College. One, two, three, four. Is that another story? Four stories? Maybe five stories? Uh, yeah. And there you have a beautiful looking Baptist church. Still standing, I think, although there are differences, so it's difficult to tell. Very difficult. Almost looking maybe like this has been changed. Hmm, what do you think? Interesting. Hmm. Mud flood. I know some people are sensitive to the term, but post cataclysm. Um, yeah, I don't think they, this was built for the front entrance to come out on the street. You imagine approaching these steps here? That's not safe in any way. Doesn't make any sense. One, two, three steps lower on this side than on this side. This is a repurposed structure of the old world. Um, that's that's all I can make sense of, really. That, that doesn't make any sense any other way. I've seen too much of this. It just repeats itself over and over. Of course, I could be wrong, and uh, the historical narrative could be absolutely correct and on the up and up. I don't think so. First Presbyterian. Beautiful tower. We have some curved stonework here. Amazing, amazing roof here. You got the ridge line coming down to what looks like a, um, a cone shape. Beautiful. Very difficult architecture. Very difficult to uh, design and to construct. Speaking of. Remember the size of this, uh, this city? 70,000 at the turn of the century. Although they told us it was 100,000. So can we believe the 70,000? These are all questions that uh, run through my mind. Of course, if you follow my work, you know I'm very skeptical. I do not trust anything that comes out of conventional, um, the con any of the conventional knowledge streams. It's just a trust thing I have. I've got trust issues with that. Uh, with the established norm, let's say. Beautiful city hall, such a small town. The city I live in is not much bigger, uh, 80,000 people, and I can't even imagine trying to wrap my head around this city having, the city I live in here having all of this type of architecture. This is the previous city hall uh, and market. Apparently it acted as both possibly as a market after this city hall was constructed, we are told. Don't believe much of it. 
Look at this building. This is very Bavarian looking. They'll tell us it's because the German immigrants. Uh, I suggest this is all old world. Uh, and you have to think, why didn't they decapitate it? You can picture that without the with all, all without all of this, and you can still see this as the roof ridge line with a flat roof. Um, we see many buildings that look like that. And you have a very suspicious lower row of windows, looking like they have it fenced off. Uh, because the windows go below the ground, and beautiful spiral staircase. Love it. We get a lot of these depictions, too, of uh, of uh, massive structures that uh, no longer stand, that basically have been erased from history. This is the Corby 4C building. We saw it in one of the street views earlier. You can actually get a little bit of a sense of uh, what the top looks like here. A uh, huge building, a St. Joseph skyscraper, sure is, sure is. And it is on the U.S. National Register of Historic Places. And just to show you, this thing was built in 1910 at a time when uh, St. Joseph was not expanding population-wise. A 12-story building, and it was apparently built in one year, 1910. Just to give you a sense of what it looks like at street level, uh, that should tell you all you need to know. One year, 1910, they're putting these up in St. Joseph, Missouri. 12-story building. And this is the type of detailing that was going on in the exterior. Really? We have a little bit of interior. Not a lot, but just to uh, pique your interest. There's those rosettes we see. We have some octagonal um, shapes going on here, which we see as well in a lot of the old world architecture. Uh, and this looks like marble slab paneling and marble trim work. So, one year, 1910, St. Joseph, Missouri. It's magic, folks. Magic. <laughs> the county poorhouse had a cupola, or had a dome, let's call it a dome. Um, all stone, amazing stonework, lots of stonework. Uh, this is also a ghost, hard to find. Of course, they had their courthouse. A um, little bit confusing, too, on this narrative. Apparently, there's two domes. This is the original dome. Here's the second dome, supposedly built at the turn of the last century. I don't know what to make of any of that. Very interesting. Beautiful structure. Couldn't find much in the way of interior on that one. The daily evening. Just want to keep showing. I really want to hammer this home. The multi story beautiful facades that we see um, not making any sense for for this place or this time. And they're showing us here a little demolition in action. In a matter of seconds, they take a building like this, one, two, three, four, five, six story building, and bring it to the ground. And these, these couldn't have been more than a hundred years with the time that they were demolished, a hundred years old, so interesting. I'm, gonna, I'm showing you now another ghost. This is apparently the first Union Station. could find no trace of this, but it popped up in my research. Amazing structure. You can see the gates up here on top. Here's the second Union Station, we're told. And again, I've mentioned in a lot of my research as well, when you see, we see a first and second and they tell us they're built in the same location. I think it's a way to solidify the New World narrative that they were building a lot of these structures rather than repurposing or reclaiming what was there. So I think uh, I think there's some deception going on there as well. Just a quick look at some of the interior of that uh, second Union Station I just showed you. It looks like, uh, I think it's wood, curved wood paneling. All you woodworkers out there, let me know. Difficult to do. There it is again. Let's move on. We're going to try to move quickly. We were just over halfway through the file. This will be a long one. I really want to bring you everything I have on St. Joseph. So I think it's a good way to illustrate the uh, deception here in the narrative. This beautiful, and again, we have a drugstore, Des Demons, sorry. We have a eagle up top here, possibly an eagle. More amazing architecture in the homes. 
And I was digging up a little bit of the uh, university in St. Joseph, Missouri. Looking like it's Missouri Western State University, and it looks like they are the Griffins. I thought that strange for a Midwestern small city. Unless you know that uh, the connection between the Griffin and the Old World. This amazing looking structure here. Again, this is, looks like something they should be chopping off maybe at this level here. Just to take the edge off, let's say. Amazing. Wow. White and wall dry goods. Of course you're going to build a structure like this to house your dry goods. Bring on the circular glass panes, folks. Beautiful. Beautiful. And, of course, burnt down in 1893. That thing had to go. Very surprised that this thing has actually come down through history. Unless... Is that a car here? Now I'm not sure what to make of it. So we have a bit of a contradiction in the narrative. Hmm. Is it telling us this burnt down in 1893? And this looking like it's later than 1893. I don't know, what do you think? What do you make of it? Same structure maybe? Different structure? I don't know. There's so much, so much to extract. The more eyes on this, the better. Okay, the Metropole Hotel. All right, here's where I prove my point. Now the first question we have to ask is, are these two the same structure? Look like they are. This is the front, just looking at it from a different angle. On the other side, you can see here the number of stories. So this is the big tall glass, one, two, three, four, and then fancy on top. Here's that taller story, I suppose. One, two, three. So we're looking like we have a decapitation going on here. We have this whole part of the building being scrubbed, and this would be the new roof line. And it's not looking very special, the roof line here, anyway. So, what do you think? Hotel Metropole. Hmm. Here's a quick look at the interior of that. This was demolished, as we will see. Uh, this is the Rubido Rubido Hotel. Just to give you an idea of the type of interiors you may have found in St. Joseph, Missouri at the turn of the 20th century. It has a real romance to it, doesn't it? You've got these light fixtures, folks. The Rubido, again, Rubido Hotel. And I was mistaken. It was the Rabadou Hotel demolition that we had uh, a picture of and a bit of an article. Um, I'm sure the Metropole as well, not making it down through time. Here's a few of these uh, hotels that existed at that early time period. There you have the streetcar. Here's the Hundley Fraser Dry Goods Company on here. We are seeing the lines. We'll see this a little bit later, a part of the, the bank in town. Now oh, I say the bank, but it's one of several banks. But. And then we have a modern day um, capture of that ornate detail that you would have seen throughout St. Joseph, Missouri in the 1800s, and I would suggest even dating further back than that uh, before the fiction was overlaid um, and be and made into our new reality. <laughs> the Johnson Woodbury Hat Building. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's laughable. This well, you don't build a structure like this for for hats, really. Take a look at the street here. Going to keep moving. We have Krug Park. Krug Park. Krug Park correct me, those of you that know. Of course, they had to do it with all these crenellated towers looking like parts of a castle. And we have the looking like what the Shriner symbol and some camels looking. 
what I suggest is part of the, the mockery of the, uh, the new narrative. I had a beautiful greenhouse. Here's another shot of that. Beautiful. They have some interesting, strange architecture for a park as well, for a city, again, of this size, the stonework, um, large infrastructure. This is would be underground, looking like. And then I have a strange-looking tunnel where it's difficult to tell the stonework and what we might consider to be natural stonework, uh, a blend of the two, uh, possibly left over from cataclysm, some changing of matter going on there. That's a little deeper down the uh, old world rabbit hole, if you will, but uh, there's much to that story as well. And this is actually giving you a good look at and just a quick zoom in of that location. So you could see here what looked like uh, a stone wall, and this is looking like that stone wall has changed into something closely resembling what we might consider to be natural these days, but somewhere in between, really. And really, how much do they know about what has gone on and what existed in the past? You have to ask the question. All right, the Let's and Spencer Grocer. Of course, why wouldn't you build a, a grocery like this? Need storage, storage space. Yet another grocer. I don't know, do they have two structures that they built? There's those circular windows again. This interesting little blurb to um, how they considered St. Joseph to be a port city because of so much of uh, so much of what was being imported seemed to end up in this location. And I don't know, that's interesting. There seems to be more to this, uh, this city than meets the eye, that's for sure. So again, please add your flavor. Anything you know about the location, any stories, add that in the comment section. Always adds to it. This is one of the libraries. You've seen the Carnegie Library. You see the dome up here. And, of course, the slope streets. There's the Carnegie again, quickly. This is the Livestock Exchange, supposedly built, uh, I'm just going to take a guess, 1880s, 1890s. I'm not going to look it up because I know it's somewhere in there. Um, here's the front end of it as it sits today. That's about to get the wrecking ball, I suggest. That's what it sounds like. Oh, and of course, we have the Wheeler and Motter Mercantile Company, the office and sales room. Not just the office, sale room too, guys. That's why they built it like this. That's why they had all this out front, because it was a sales room as well. It had to look the part. <laughs> An old depiction of a medical college. Very tall looking door in this depiction. I know it's just a drawing, but I uh, thought I'd throw it in there for you. And a very old depiction of, uh, or old photograph of the Mercy Hospital. You have the stone walls again everywhere. Makes me wonder if post cataclysm there was the remains of the old world civilization, if there was an attempt to rebuild. Uh, and then you had that whole colonialism narrative and the uh, inheritors taking over the realm and having to scrub the minds of the of who remained, right, and eliminate them and all the rest of it. I had to highlight this um, just to show the ridiculousness of what we're looking at here. You can see the windows coming down to nothing, and you can see it looks like this either a window or a door, just making no sense at all. You would never build that way. And there you get the date on top. The date is what dispels all doubt that these were built at the time they tell us. Why else would you slap the date on the front of a building? There it is. Going further back in time. Nabisco apparently headquartered in um, St. Joseph, Missouri for a time. I see a few structures here related to the National Biscuit Company, Nabisco. Massive structures. Very interesting. 
this is again a good example of what you often see. I suspect you would have this scaled down to this line. Um, all of this demolished and then of course a flattening of the roof to make it look less spectacular. Just a thought. But I have, we are seeing some evidence of that. So. so this out front of that same structure here, you're getting a good look at the brick cobble roads and the age of these streets. Certainly not several decades old, looking much, much older. And this thing burnt, apparently burnt down, uh, maybe 80s, something like that. Maybe later. This might have been more recent, 2016. Apologies, you can look that up. Got to keep moving on. All right, noise in Norman, that's what that was as well. Boots and shoes. And then I have another structure here looking massive. So hard to know. Hard to know what to make of any of this. All right, this is the Opera House. So let me get to the Toodles Opera House. Uh, this structure not showing up in later depictions. This is very early. This is where the horses were still drawing the streetcars until they got their electricity. Lucky though, St. Joseph getting electricity. Second in the country behind South Bend, Indiana. Inside of that opera house, looking like this, you get a sense of the elaborate detail. You get a statue here, of course, why wouldn't you? This is St. Joseph, Missouri. Why wouldn't you? Here we are on the stage, looking out into the crowd. And of course, for a city of 70,000 people, maybe 60 at the time, the, it would be completely justified to build a structure like this. Of course you would. It's very cultured people. <laughs> yeah, there it is, a little later down through time. And I think it became the Pioneer Building, I believe you can see. Again, those beautiful spiral um, fire escape stair um, coming off the buildings there. You have the Orpheum as well, not to be outdone. Amazing front entry of the Orpheum. All sorts of decoration going on here. This is the inside of the Orpheum. Hmm. What do you think? Does it make sense for St. Joseph to have, Joseph to have all, of, all of this? Have I shown you too much? Did you tune out already? If you're still with me on this video, I mean, making no sense, is it? Really making no sense at all. I'm going to keep going forward here. The Pate, Pate House. This one's sort of... Uh, um, praised uh, in the in the history of the town as one of the old buildings that has uh, survived, and it's you know it's got a bit of that historical detail attached to it. This is where you might stay if you want to get a flavor of uh, old uh, Saint Joseph. But we've seen um, all sorts of structures looking like this, and even more spectacular than this. You get a little cupola on top there. Uh, supposedly the stables of the uh, Pony Express. Move on. All right, printing company. Here we go. Here again, I'm going to prove my point. So we have this structure looking the same as this structure. You can see the six arched windows, six arched windows, six arched windows, six arched windows. Here we have a mansard roof, and you can actually see a bit of the detail in the mansard roof here. Amazing, amazing structure. And on this, you have a decapitation that's going on here. So this is, again, another, um, another proof that uh, these buildings have been scaled back from the time period that they were found dead. Found dead. Found dead. Um, either that or this is just a drawing and somebody made up this portion which some people make the case for as well. Whatever you want to do to, uh, if you're a narrative apologist, you can go ahead and leave that, that's fine. That's up to you. Printing company again. You can see some of the heads on here. Amazing, beautiful structure. And there's that uh, face on the corner again. Whew. 
doesn't matter what you were pedaling back in uh, St. Joseph, Missouri, um, the building had to be amazingly ornate. Apparently this is the first railroad. 1875 the railroad bridge across the Missouri here. This was brand new at the time they're telling us. Take a look at the stonework down here. I know it's, it's, it's kind of hard to tell but you get a sense for uh, how old and massive that is. Megalithic stonework supporting that bridge at a very early period of time. So I don't think so. And here's the dry goods company we saw earlier, Richardson Roberts and Byrne Dry Goods. Um, here's a drawing for you. Massive structure, making no sense um, to be in a in a city like uh, St. Joseph. Here's the corner of that building, just to give you a sense of the scale of this structure here. So we're looking at this part here. Um, perfectly smooth column. How old is that? How old is all of this? Um, I submit we're looking at something much older than what we've been told built by people that we have been told not to believe existed that's how i see it i could be wrong it's just my summation um, based on my research and the research of other people that have been courageous enough to challenge the historical narrative <laughs> all sorts of uh it, it gets to a point where it's absolutely ridiculous. How many structures could you possibly have like this in uh, in this city? Here we have the National Bank, the Saxton National Bank. I mentioned it earlier, across the street from the dry goods. I uh, couldn't find much on it um, in this state. Just a grainy, um, well, somewhere between a photo and a, and a depiction, I guess, or, or drawing. Here it is again. There's uh, Alba, Alba Saxton. Yeah, I'll leave the backstory alone. Of course, they have the capital and how much it costs, and yeah, I don't think so. And then again, we're going to see the lions here at the front of entrance of that building. Saxton Bank. So, how are you feeling about St. Joseph, Missouri? I think everything's on the up and up and uh, his story is accurate and there's no funny business or is this story making more sense is it more interesting history or this story okay we're going to look at what they're calling the uh, Shakespeare Chateau now looking like a bed and breakfast obviously old world structure and just look at some of the interior of this building just to give you a sense of the interior finish really off the charts incredible I know I, I say it so much but I, I think I st I'm still understanding understating all of it even though I say it so much <laughs> all right we're coming to the end of the file here and this is the museum. This is apparently also a museum. This is uh, um, the St. Joseph Museum as well. Strange looking building covered in all sorts of ivy and stuff, but you can tell it's an old world uh, structure for sure. There's another Nabisco um, structure, repurposed old world building in my summation. Of course, they had the chutes at the midway at Lake Contrary. I like that. Lake Contrary. Hmm. That's interesting. This is the stockyards. We saw the stockyard building there earlier, and this this was a massive part of uh, um, St. Joseph coming through the uh, 20th century. Um, slaughterhouse, stockyards, all the rest of it. Meat processing, packing. I'm trying to decide which one to end on. Maybe we'll go right to the end of the file. We have an, another theater with a more spectacular, amazing beauty. Another dry good building. This is an interesting one. Maybe I'll end on this. This is the uh, just a little blurb from a newspaper from way back when, suggesting that 
the uh, they had something called the Oxford and the Turkish bath, the handsomest Turkish baths in the United States in St. Joseph, Missouri. So what a strange tale I've told you, I suppose, right? This story or his story? Which one do you prefer? Thanks for watching.